Hey, Survivor. Welcome to episode 101 of the Vibrant Survivor podcast. In this episode, you'll learn eight healthy ways to grieve after narcissistic abuse. First, we'll self-regulate with a 448 breathing exercise if you'd like. We'll inhale for four, hold for four, and exhale for eight. Ready? Inhale, two, three, four. Hold, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. What emotions are coming up for you right now? Grab your notebook and pen and let's dig in. Hey, Survivor. Welcome to the Vibrant Survivor Podcast. Do you want to disconnect from a narcissistic or toxic situation and heal? Are you Googling how to identify a narcissist, narcissistic abuse, and boundaries? Are you feeling stressed and lonely while trying to avoid being sucked back in and lied to again? Hey, I'm Leslie. As a busy wife and mom, I fell for the lies and manipulations of narcissists. I wasted my time, talents, and money on users who kept moving the goalposts. I wanted real relationships and business opportunities and to enjoy life with my family. Instead, I struggled with anxiety, panic attacks, and insomnia, and I couldn't trust my body or anybody until I took a holistic approach to healing. In this podcast, you'll find tips for healthy living, trauma healing, and boundaries so that you'll have the freedom, confidence, and inner peace to respond, not react, after narcissistic abuse. Take a deep breath in, let it out slowly, and just relax this time's for you. Hey, Survivor! Are you tired of feeling exhausted, stressed, lonely, and stuck in narcissistic relationships, and you just want closure and healing? I spent years rationalizing toxic relationships and dysfunctional environments in the name of community, connection, and career. As a result, I wasted my time, talents, and money on users who kept moving the goalposts. One of the worst was an alleged murderer who discarded me after I caught him lying, stopped helping him for free, and held my boundaries. Even though I dodged a bullet, I felt depressed, ashamed, and I doubted myself. I want you to know that you don't have to suffer in silence, feel alone, or crazy anymore. Come and experience the power of creating your own closure without the permission or participation of the narcissist. I've been no contact for over four years now, and I've grown personally and professionally. I have more clarity, stronger boundaries, I'm building a life and business that I've always wanted, and enjoying real relationships. I know you want to break patterns of getting into toxic relationships, even if you don't mean to. And it feels so good to disconnect from dysfunction, set and hold boundaries, provide closure for myself, and focus on self-care and to empower my kids to do the same. Go to ClosureCoachingSession.com right now and get ready to heal after narcissistic abuse. This week, I was back in court for the sentencing of a juvenile who was involved in a barn fire incident that could have been extremely tragic. It was tragic enough, but it could have been worse. No one died, fortunately, but... A lot was lost and a family was left traumatized. And I had the chance to talk to the father about his feelings of loss after the hearing was over and the sentencing was complete. And I asked him, like, how are you feeling? And he was saying that this is a common question that people ask and they feel like, hey, you know, aren't you excited about having the opportunity to rebuild something new in the place of your previous structure? And he was like, I don't know how I feel. I feel sad. I feel angry. I, sometimes I feel nothing. And after we talked a little bit more, he shared that he missed certain things, like I miss this, or I want this, or I really could use this right now. And of course, everything was lost and completely destroyed. And the structure totally collapsed. Uh, Fortunately, the children who were in it were able to just escape in time before that happened. And then he was kind of rationalizing his feelings like, well, it's not like I need this or, or that I need 
this quantity or caliber of fill in the blank with the item. And there were so many conflicting emotions that were swirling around inside of him about what he should or shouldn't feel. And a lot of it was based on the opinions of others and not what was actually going on inside of him. And that survivor is a problem that can keep you stuck. So I continued to listen to him and observe his body language as we were talking and he was sharing and just validated his feelings, even as he was struggling to identify them. Alexithymia is a real thing, survivor, that struggle to articulate what has happened to you or is currently happening to you when you're literally at a loss for words. And I saw this happening during this conversation. And on top of that, as though the incident itself, the losses, uh, the, the, the danger that it put uh, several children's lives in wasn't enough, on a bigger scale, there was a cultural push for his family to get over it, move on, you know, take the money and run, get excited about rebuilding. And it wasn't helping. And I could tell that. Can you relate, Survivor? So when I shared with him the health risks of harboring all those feelings inside, this devastated dad told me that he could actually feel the physical effects of the trauma inside his body. And I felt for him and his family. They obviously are hurting and they need to grieve. And the whole situation is just so sad and it was completely unnecessary, could have been avoided. And all they want at the end of the day is justice and peace. And I want it for them. And I want that for you, survivor. You need to grieve. Take all the time you need is what I told him, basically. And you may need to disconnect from the dysfunctional coping mechanisms of others in order to walk this out. Here are eight healthy ways to grieve after narcissistic abuse. Number one, allow yourself to feel what you feel. Grief is a process and you need to let yourself feel all of the emotions that come up. Allow yourself to feel what you feel, to know what you know. And allowing yourself to feel things like sadness, anger, fear is normal and it's an important part of healing, your healing. So acknowledge and embrace your emotions unfiltered as they come up. Number two, journal it out. Write about the loss that you're grieving. This can help you to sort out your thoughts and feelings, gain some understanding, process things, and even release them. You know, move through the grief. You know, write about the loss of trust, maybe loss of trust in yourself and others. Loss of possessions, say in the case of this homeowner, hopes and dreams. We were talking about the fact that there were certain things that they're not going to be able to do down the line when they have grandkids. They're not going to be able to show them or share with them certain family heirlooms or photo albums of, of different memories or different uh, members of their family, different ancestors. So sad. You need to write about those things. Get those things out. Number three, vibe with your tribe. Surround yourself with people who can provide a safe space for you to grieve. There's healing power in community. You'll feel less lonely and you may find healthier relationships to replace the toxic ones that you lost. Friends, family, support groups, healthy communities are your best bet. Folks who have been there who have a heart for you and for your healing journey. Number four, set boundaries like a boss. Protect your energy, emotions, and other resources with healthy boundaries. This can also create space for healing to take place. 
it's powerful and it's a tool that we need to really use more often, especially as survivors. And we're all about taking back our power over here. And you may need to say no to people, places, things that suck the life out of you or that just don't support you and say yes to the things that edify and uplift you. Number five, practice self-compassion as self-care. Be kind and gentle to yourself along the way, survivor. This helps to avoid self-blaming, shaming, even reframe and resolve rumination. Ask yourself, how are you talking to and about yourself? Think about that. How are you treating yourself? Are you treating yourself? Or are you bashing, trashing, or withholding from yourself? Are you giving yourself grace and space? Things to think about. Number six, get moving. Walk, run, dance, bike, stretch, whatever you need to do to get moving. This is going to increase that blood flow, reduce your stress. It can help you to release emotions. It can improve your mood, improve your strength, and build resilience. Now, what's the best way for you to move? the way that you'll show up and do consistently. And just 20 minutes a day can make a world of difference. Number seven, get grounded. Ground yourself in the present moment with a mindfulness or meditation practice. Allow and observe your thoughts without judgment. And this will help you to process grief and gain perspective on your situation. You can pray, You can pray with other people that you trust. You can use tools like the Calm app, for example. I love that. Uh, Go on meditation walks. Get outside. Do a body scan. Do a room scan where you identify things in the room to help you to be in the now. Practice mindful eating. Slow down and just be in the moment. Number eight, hire a pro. Work with a therapist, counselor, or coach who understands trauma and narcissistic abuse. Someone who can listen with empathy, offer validation, perspective, strategies, and support, and reassure you that you're not alone or crazy, depending on your needs. I've been their survivor, and let me know how I can help. Let's recap eight healthy ways to grieve after narcissistic abuse. Number one. Allow yourself to feel what you feel. Number two, journal it out. Number three, vibe with your tribe. Number four, set boundaries like a boss. Number five, practice self-compassion as self-care. Number six, get moving. Number seven, get grounded. And number eight, hire a pro. Remember, when grieving after narcissistic abuse, Don't get over it. Move through it. Thanks for tuning in. I hope this encourages you to be patient and kind to yourself as you walk your path at your pace. Take care, and I'll talk to you soon. If this podcast has helped you understand who and what you're dealing with, sharpen your discernment, and move forward on your healing journey, share it with another survivor. Help me help others by leaving a review for the show. And let's connect on social. Take a screenshot, share it in your IG stories, find and tag me at The Vibrant Survivor, and I'll share your post too. I look forward to connecting with you on IG and seeing you back here. You're not alone and you're not crazy. Know who you're dealing with, know who you are. Take care and I'll meet you back here next week. Bye-bye.